After helping so many people automate and untether their equipment and move themselves indoors for their imaging sessions, the next question I often get is, how do you monitor or check in on your gear? Maybe it's just a PHD2 warning or a Meridian flip or something else entirely, but being able to watch your gear from the warmth of your home is a nice addition. Maybe the question's a bit bigger than that, and it isn't just the gear you wanna watch, but maybe the skies as well. Let's just take a couple minutes today so I can show you what I'm doing to address all these issues in a very affordable way. Hey everyone, Chad or Patriot Astro. A while back I did a short video on a camera I was using for monitoring equipment and since then I've made a change to that equipment and I wanted to tell you what I'm using and why based on the criteria I put in place. In this video, I'll take you through my thought process and the solutions capabilities. Of course, I'll put links to everything I'm using or everything I talk about in the description below to make it a little bit easier for you. So full disclosure here, I am an Amazon affiliate. So if you use these links to make a purchase, I do get a couple percentage points, which certainly is nice. It does take me a lot of time to make these videos, but if you buy it somewhere else, that's fine with me. This is really so much more about me just answering questions that are coming my way and showing you what I'm doing to address these problems people are asking about than making a couple dollars here and there. Now I will say if you do find this solution useful before we go any further, the camera I'm gonna show you is only only about 35 US dollars. So let's quickly go through the criteria I set for myself when I was looking at cameras, then we can dig into the solution and how it meets those criteria. The main focus is to address monitoring my gear plus maybe some aspects of security. I need the cameras to be small and low power. I'd ideally like it to be a one-time cost if possible. I'd like constant recording capabilities. It needs to be able to see in the dark but not be disruptive. I'd like flexible viewing options, and if possible, I'd like to be able to use this camera multiple ways, maybe even simultaneously. So what did I end up choosing? For me, I picked the Wise Cam 3. This camera is really surprising at the price point. Um, it primarily is sold out of US and Canadian stores, but I found a lot of people buying them globally. I'll mention local versus cloud capabilities in a minute, but my goal was one-time cost, so I was trying to avoid any geographical cloud-based requirement anyway. All right, so first was monitoring and security. For me, I really just wanted to check in on my equipment. Did my flip happen? Does everything look okay? Stuff like that. But like any other Wi-Fi IP connected camera today, it can and will send alerts. It also has an alarm that's pretty loud and two-way audio. It definitely meets both criteria here and you'll see more of this as we move on. I also had a small footprint and low power requirement. And while it's a pretty small indoor and outdoor camera, even with the base attached, I don't mount mine. I just drag it away from the mount base each night and aim it up. The power adapter is a five volt, one amp power adapter, and just about any USB port should be able to power this thing. But it also comes with the AC adapter here too, if needed. Next was the one-time cost requirement. There's nothing worse than being required to pay monthly or yearly fees if you don't want to. Well, in this case, that's up to you. They have an additional service called Cam Plus that will do a couple extra things for you for about 15 US dollars per year per camera. The service gives you more real-time activity-based event monitoring, longer event storage, and also gives you some AI-based smart triggering for things like people versus cars versus pets versus packages. You may not want or need any of that. Again, for me, I want monitoring more than security, so most event-based notifications are unimportant to me. Although even without the subscription service, I do get those events, they just aren't as smart. So with a one-time purchase, can I get some events, look in on my gear, both real-time and historically? Yep, no problem. Next, I wanted constant recording. I wanna be able to see what happened at 2.30 in the morning when I get up at six in the morning. Well, this camera can take a micro SD card and records continuously by default. They want you to use their 32 gig card, but I'm using a 128 gig card without issue and I'll put a link in the description to the one I'm using. After running this camera for a while, my math on this storage tells me I'm gonna get about 10 full days of historical footage at 1080p. That's not too bad, especially since I only put this out for maybe 10 hours a night at the most. If I wanna see when the clouds came and went, I can easily do that. So as it relates to video, night vision is also important. I found this camera to be really flexible and non-invasive to my imaging. You can control whether the night vision is on or off as well as the IR strength. There's a far mode that blasts IR a bit further, but theoretically, 
IR could cause you issues, especially in narrowband. Luckily for me, this camera also has a near mode, which works really well, and you can always even turn off night vision altogether. And to be honest, I'm really pretty impressed with the quality of the images, even when night vision is off. Okay, so I have a camera that works, but what about viewing the footage? Wise has done a really great job here. You can watch on Alexa show devices that I won't show here, but of course we also have the phone app, which is the most likely viewing platform. This lets me see the footage in real time from the camera, as well as historically from the SD card. They've also recently released a beta web view capability that lets you watch through a browser. Now this option requires that Cam Plus subscription, which you do get for free for the first two weeks, so you'll be able to make up your mind on how important this feature is to you personally. Another option, and one I like quite a bit, is that they have a firmware upgrade available that you can install that allows you to stream the live feed from the camera via RTSP. This lets you pull the feed into all kinds of software packages, just like the many IP security cameras on the market. I've pulled together a mosaic type view for my cameras that I can watch in the free VLC player that works on just about every computer OS on the market. My screen demonstration here is a bit cropped because of how I recorded my Windows desktop, but I think you get the picture. I'll put this mosaic info in the description below as well, and I may even put a web page together on my website. And then finally, additional uses. At this price point, what else can I do with this thing? Well, it can also function as a cheap sky camera that I can use to monitor cloud activity. And the great part is that it has a tool built into the camera that can create time lapses on the fly. Set the start and end time plus the image frequency and just let it go. You can record a time lapse, check live or historical footage via your phone, and stream an RTSP feed all at the same time. I really haven't had any issues. So there you go, that's how I monitor my equipment and how I get some pretty cool time lapses along the way. Cost here in the US is about $35 from retailers like Amazon. And I've actually picked up a couple of these just because of how impressed I am and how many uses I can get out of this. Remember to check the description for links and other related info below. Thanks for watching and go start taking time lapses with hopefully your clear skies. So what did I end up choosing? Camera in my pocket. <clears throat>